¿Cómo están todos hoy? Eh, mi nombre es José Fernández, yo trabajo con una compañía que se llama Gustavo en Hamilton. La presentación que yo les voy a dar a ustedes se llama sobre una herramienta bien sencilla que construí en los últimos meses que se, yo le llamé Showdown Runner. Um, les voy a pedir disculpas, yo voy a dar la presentación en inglés, espero que eso no sea un problema para alguien. ¿no? Um, como estoy representando la compañía, en este caso una compañía americana, ¿no? lo voy a hacer de cada uno. ¿Está bien con everyone? Sí. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so the agenda for this morning, um, I'm quickly going to describe what Shodan is. Um, who here has never used Shodan before? You are going to get a lot of value out of this. You're going to get a, a good crash course, we're going to give you the resources, the where to find more information in case you're interested in continuing to use and learn the tool. Um, I'm going to um, share with you guys and gals my personal experiences with the tool, um, why I kind of uh, had to make this tool, and um, some of the limitations that I currently um, identified with the Shodan platform, which is one of the, like, the principal motivations for, for the development. Um, I'm also going to show how you can use the, the query syntax that's used uh, within Shodan to use the search filters to, to get the information that, that you are interested in, and in some cases, the information that you don't know that you would normally find, right? Um, which is one of the, the cool things um, about Shodan itself. Um, I'm going to show everyone here how to use the tool um, that we made. It's called Shodan Runner. And um, I'm also going to show uh, a some quick highlights of where we want to take the progression of the tool. Uh, since this tool is so simple, um, we eventually just want to get it incorporated into the like um, Shodan um, clients that are out there. Because right? this, uh, when, when you see the source code, you're going to be like, come on. <laughs> uh, so a little bit about me. Um, I am a CNO subject matter expert. The first time I heard this, it was from somebody else, and I couldn't believe it. It like, must be confusing me with another Jose Fernandez. Uh, but you know, as, as, as I kept working in this industry, you know, it kind of became a thing. Um, I specialize in CME and CMB. Um, does everybody know what that means? No? So, uh, exploitation and defense. Um, I was hired by Booz Allen Hamilton to do research in a new technology that's called NFV, that stands for Network Function Virtualization. Uh, specifically, we're looking for ways to incorporate this technology to reduce like, operating expenditures and um, capital expenditures associated with virtualizing uh, network technologies. Um, I, I hack all the things, that's all I do. Um, I spend a lot of my time um, focusing on doing research on virtualization and software-defined radios. Um, I do a lot of research. <laughs> and uh, the company, you know, they, they let me do it, so I like it. So the quick intro to Shodan, it was created by John Matterly back in 2009. Um, if you use uh, Shodan, it allows anyone who uses the platform to query uh, Shodan itself for um, things that are connected to the internet. And by things, I mean everything. It's the internet of threats, right? Not the internet of things. Um, and one of the cool things is you don't have to scan yourself, right? You don't have to fire up Nmap. You don't have to fire up MassScan. Somebody's already done this and uploaded the results into Shodan. So Shodan does some scanning, and people can also contribute to this platform. So you can kind of get a big picture of what's out there. And uh, some of the information um, is usually still up to date. Right? So you don't have to like expose yourself by trying to scan all these things and you know potentially getting reported to your ISP. Or, you know. um, so it kind of helps solve a, a common problem in InfoSec. 
which is the uh, repetition that we do in our industry, right? I think um, over the last couple of years, uh, does, did everybody hear about the LinkedIn password dump? Right, so it was like 100 million accounts, something like that. And then I see all these researchers, they, they build these rigs to like crack passwords and stuff like that. They never share the results, right? And I'm not saying that they necessarily should do like, you know, this email, this is the, the password, but they should, you know, they should at least release the password so that way, you know, we start using better password policies and avoid, you know, the common ones, right? So I think, uh, some of those problems where a lot of researchers overlap and do the same things, you know, that, that's, it's not only an academic problem, but it's also a practitioner problem. So uh, you can submit your own scans, right? Um, that's a pretty cool function about Shodan. Um, if you feel something's not out there or it's not up to date, you can actually tell Shodan, hey, I have uh, some NMAP results for you. And they get uploaded, and then everybody knows. You may or may not want to do this. Um, you can use Shodan to quickly look for some common use ports. Um, one of the cool things is uh, a lot of databases are just hanging out there on the internet, and they uh, they've kind of made it in such a way where it automatically just starts. If the databases are open, it starts parsing them, and and then you can see all these open databases out there. Um, what is it? like not, uh, Mongo, MongoDB. So a lot of MongoDB databases are just hanging out on the internet and they're like completely open and they have gigabits worth of uh, information. So. X Mexico. Huh? X Mexico. And Mexico no mean? Yep, they use it for the electoral system. For what? For the electoral system or the electoral list was on the one. Yes. Yeah. Like you know, caramba. For us, that's job security, but you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's out there. Shodan.io, right? Um, let's go in there. I don't know why Facebook is in my top site. I never go there. <laughs>
any party. Four four three. Okay. You sure? All right. 
So with the API functionality, you can um, start using the Shodan CLI client um, using this, this key. So you feed that into your CLI client, and then you can run Shodan searches or different Shodan commands from a command terminal, and you don't have to use a web GUI. Um, some of the libraries that, that I've already seen supported, there's a Python client, Ruby.net, um, Carlo Pere hizo un parser de esto en PowerShell. There's a lot of clients out there. So, you know, I can, I can use the CLI, I can download stuff, cool, I can parse the results, awesome, that's what I wanted to do because, you know, in the web GUI, unless you're using some other mechanism for automation, you know, you, it's, it's you, right? You're using maybe Selenium or something like that to drive you know, your, your web search, is, well, that's, that's good on you, but you know, this is much easier. So there's, there's no like file input um, functionality built into uh, any of these CLI clients that I've seen so far. And you know, in my case, you know, I need to get a lot of information. I don't have time to, you know, manually construct things. That's boring. <laughs> So that's why uh, we started making Shodan Runner uh, version 0.1. This is my main motivation. I wanted to be able to read files that had search syntax, prepared search syntax, and let the tool run all the scans for me. Um, so let's, before we show you how to use the tool, before I show you how to use the tool, um, let's go down into some search filter science here real quick. Um, so the filters are the criteria, are the things that you want to look for, right? Obvious. Um, so the, the way that the syntax is, there's a filter, and then there's a colon, and then there's your criteria, right? So uh, some of the easier ones are like port, because you can't really screw it up. Um, it's just, you know, port, colon, a number. And there's dozens of these filters. So if you want to look for Things that have the string Apache, you know, port 80, link VLAN. This was actually pretty cool. I didn't know I could do this. So, uh, how many of you are network engineers? Yeah? Do you do port trunking? Gotta be careful, right? So, this will actually find, you know, if you're not using, if, if you've trunked way too many VLANs and it's hanging out to, to one of these connections that, you know, it can touch the internet, it could potentially could already been ingested, right? So, um, this one's actually pretty interesting because one of, the, one of the filters that they throw out there is for operating systems. And I was like, either Windows 7 or 8. And I was like, wait, is this? system incorporating regex. When I saw that or, I was like, it has regex? Wow, that's pretty cool. We'll get more, we'll get back to that one later. Um, so, so there's actually these time filters too. If you want to find things that were, um, if you want to see results from before a time, you can use the before and the after. So these scans are related to when they were uploaded into Shodan. Country. Country is a very useful filter. And you can use exclusion as a filter option. So in, instead of, you know, I want these things, you can go, I don't want anything that's Cisco, right? You put a, you put a bang in front, exclamation sign, right? Um, I will caution you, the, the negation, if, if you search for things using negation, you're gonna get a lot of things that you didn't intend for. So in my case, you know, hey, show me everything on Shodan that's not Cisco. That's, you know, 254 million other things. And I was like, ugh, maybe this is not the one I want. <laughs> so, right, you always wanna be specific with uh, some of your filtering, and you wanna try to avoid using exclusion for the very same reason, because you might not get what you want, and then if, if, you, if you let it run and you didn't check, you're like, ah, oh, lost all these credits now. So um, how do we optimize this, right? So you can use searches, yes, and then you can parse them, sure, but it's better to have your searches broken out in a way that they're more specific. 
right? So you want to narrow your search from the start because there's just so many things out there, right? Product Apache and then port 80, oh, in this case port 81. So I want to see, you know, people who are hosting things on, you know, not, uh, the, the non-standard port, right? So instead of 80, they picked 81, you know. Maybe that's interesting for, for some of you. Um, VLANs, and then use that OS regex. Or is it fake regex? And you know why? Because I tried this with other operating systems and it did not work. So they've actually made a list of Windows 7 or Windows 8 and it will actually look for this tag, right? So if you try to use regex for, for, for an operating system, currently, in my experience, it has never worked for me. So fake regex. They made a list, they compiled it, and then you can use filters to access their results. Um, um, so before and after, you know, those dates that we got there, why you would use this is entirely, you know, dependent on your needs. Maybe you want to look at your network um, footprint for, for the things that you're responsible for before changes and after changes, right? It may be possible to use these filters to do that. Um, we, let's, similar to the example that I did earlier, you know, I want to see everything that's on 3389 on inside the US. If you use the, the Shodan web GUI, um, it'll actually show you the images of the remote desktop session. <laughs> If you use the CLI tools, I think there's some options that you can use to like, download these images, but you're going to get a lot of information that you may not want. Um, if, if there's any criteria right, that you're putting in that has spaces, use double quotes. If you do not use double quotes, it will, you won't get what you want. Right? So in my case, I did an OX, you know, Okay, not enough. So Windows XP, right? So there's space there. I only got 21 results. It's like, there's no way. There's no way that the Windows 10 upgrade plan worked and upgraded all the XP devices. No, it is impossible, mm -hmm. right? So when we use the uh, double quotes, right? We get 215,000. You really should upgrade. <laughs> so uh, the company I work for normally doesn't release too many products um, for general consumption. We do have a GitHub page um, at Booz uh, Allen, and, and you can go there and you can download some of our, you know, like uh, public projects if you're interested. In my case, uh, the tool I made was so simple. And they were like, yeah, it's okay. Um, so we can download it from here. Let's do that now. doesn't install here. Sorry. So if you don't have Git, this is how you install Git. <laughs> who here has never used Git? Honest, honest to God, who here has never used Git? Yeah? Hey, it's okay. Uh, so Git allows you to uh, you know, pull GitHub repos.
licenses under an MIT license, so it'll be free forever. When you see the source code, you will understand why. <laughs> um, a few things you want to do is, you know, every time you download stuff like this, uh, you always want to check your code, right? Other people's projects, you don't know what's on there. But you, don't not, you don't trust them. Uh, when you put in a cool logo and then the screen uh, it's too small. set up for you, it will do it for you. Um, if you try running this as a non-root user, it won't work. It'll kind of break. So it's a limitation right now how we did this.
It's kind of odd because I didn't drive on like a couple nights ago at work. <laughs> I'm very surprised. Right? 
Um, the next parameter is going to be what you want your files to be called. Right, so this is going to, this is whatever string that you want, all your files are going to start with this string. So I'll just call this, you know, uh, I just wish I could type besides. Yep. Um, the next two arguments um, are your files, right? So. In the uh, GitHub repo, we have included uh, three different examples that, that you can use to kind of, you know, uh, one, make sure the tool works, and two, to, to kind of understand some of the uh, search filters that are used. And uh, the order of these files doesn't really matter because um, the way that this script works, it's a, it's a nested for loop. I'm sorry, but you know, this is you know efficiency, right? This works. Uh, in Python, we, we, we started doing this thing, you know, rewriting pretty much this. This is, this is pretty much a bash script, I'm sorry, but you no, know, it works. Um, and we started using the, the inner tools library, and in, 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 in math, it's called a product, right? It's, it's, a, it's a matrix, it's a, it's a double list, right? This is pretty much how Showdown Runner works. It's going to read two files, and then it's going to attempt all the values. Uh, within the two files, right? So if, if you kind of have a good idea of how to use search filters, you can use this to then optimize your searches because you can throw in a whole bunch of things, let the tool run, and then you look at the results, right? So in my case, I'm gonna use an example file here, so I'll use example file one. And example file, Okay, so there's a file two and a file one. But before that, I'm going to cat one of these so you can kind of see what they are. So my file one is countries. So down here. The countries, right? US, Russia, China. Uh, ports, 443, 80, 3389. Right? So uh, how many search results am I going to get from this after run? How many different, OK, better question. How many output files am I going to get? Yep, nine files, right? Even though there's six things in there, you know, um, three to two, two files. Yep. Um, the way that Showdown Runner is structured, by default, we set the download limit to 10,000 results for each query. You can change that to whatever number you want. You just have to really, really make sure that what you're searching for is what you really want. If not, you know, it's just gonna, it's gonna use all your credits, and uh, it's gonna take a while. I'm going to edit the tool very quickly, so that way it only it it only downloads the first ten things. Because if not, this search will take, uh, when I ran this search the first time, I think it took like eight hours to download all the results. Ooh. I think I lost my shell.
that's pretty simple, right? Nested loop, again, you can use this for like anything. So there, the very last thing is the limit. So you see a 10,000 there. Uh, let's just do 10, right? Because we don't want to be here all day. All right, cool. That should work. files, 
right? Um, this was easy to do, but you know, some APIs out there, you can't just like throw it into a nested bash loop or you know, use the Python native tools. So you know, think about those things because if your API can do one thing, then it should also be able to do, you know, it should be able to loop itself somehow. Okay. You know, I can use a web GUI. I can download results. I don't need this. This is garbage. But my tool goes to 11. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, honestly, it's going to save all this output for you. So it's already taking away um, a task that you no longer have to do. Right? So that means more time for you to do whatever you want. <sighs> I hate this a lot. I'm not going to use short and I'd rather scan thing myself. The cool thing about this tool is, Sometimes you'll get results that you weren't expecting, right? Or maybe you don't know where to start, so you can put in random things there and see what you get. That's a little bit cooler than just randomly scanning things and you know, getting in trouble. Uh, it's just two files. I want to be able to read more than two files to do this product. So initially when I made this tool, it was three files. Um, the reason that I made this tool was uh, doing kind of like market research and I wanted to find out very specific things, so I was, I was, you know, I was using three files. But then uh, I kind of came to the realization that you know I could have been more focused, so I trimmed it down to two. Most problems in CNO can be solved by reading two files, right? Um, obviously, I said that, right? <laughs> You may disagree with me, but honestly, uh, you know, I've been doing this long enough to, to kind of realize, you know, most of my problems are usually down to two things. Or, or I can, you know, if I take two different data sources, I can accomplish this, right? Um, one of the things that I wanted to incorporate in like a future version was it would auto detect how many things, how many files you put into argv, so that way it automatically detects, oh, okay, so there's, you know, there's this many files, so I have to iterate myself this many times. Um, I did realize, though, if the more narrow you become with your searches, you're going to get less things, right? So, so usually, after the third file, you're, you're already getting like dozens of results based on um, what you're looking at, right? So it really depends. So our Python rewrite for this tool is already 100%. Um, we're going to probably release it in the next couple of weeks as version 0.4. Um, there's no more bash. It's all written in Python. Pretty easy. Uh, we want to do like a stop and zoom function. So that way, if your scans get interrupted, you can resume. Um, what I mentioned about the RGB for the multiple files, we'll throw that in there. But honestly, our main goal is to just incorporate this functionality into the main like Shodan, like development efforts. Shodan should have this feature built into you know itself, right? So that's really like our main goal. We, we want to do it hopefully you know, in the next six months. You know, I started looking at the source code and uh, you know put it in there and start playing with it. So you know, it's not going to be that hard. But, you know, we just, we just have to do it in such a way where it's going to be sustainable. Any questions? Yep. The, the search credits, how does that work out? For every one, it's one to, it's a one to one, or depending on what you look for? So up to 10,000 results, it's one credit. And then after 10,000 results, you'll, you'll lose like one or two more credits for, like if you download like 100,000 or like a million things, you're going to lose like maybe you know, a couple, couple dozen credits. And just a, a comment. I remember last year, um, Shodan did a Black Friday special. If you all pay fifty dollars, yes. they, they it went down to like twenty dollars last year. Yeah, it was like nineteen bucks. I remember. Something like that. So if anybody wants to buy it and not pay fifty, wait till Black Friday, get it for like twenty. Yep. Yeah. You're gonna use it. Good call. Thanks, man. <laughs> so I did a couple of queries and and then I tested those ports and and they weren't open. So do you have any feel for like how up to date the results are uh, in Shodan? Uh, well, so one of the things that you have to kind of consider too is, you know, one, maybe being blocked here, right? 
Um, there could be some filtering here in this network. Just things to consider. Um, if you look at the like search output, it'll tell you when it got uploaded, so you can use like those timestamps. And you know, it might be a couple years old. So you know, it could be a network thing here, or it could be the fact that you know it really is close. Any other questions? Comments? Yeah, hey, use the tool, you know. Don't get in trouble though. Right? <laughs> All right, hey, uh, thanks everybody for having me. And